How's everyone doing? Thanks for joining me in my small engine repair channel. Today's project's on this uh, pretty rough shaped uh, Yardworks 27 inch two stage snow blower. And uh, I just purchased this thing for 50 bucks. Um, I might have overpaid now that I look at it, but uh, let's see if we can uh, figure out what's going on with it and get it back into service. Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. Uh, this one uh, is probably going to have quite a bit of different information in it as far as how to fix uh, things that are possibly wrong with your uh, two-stage snowblower. Um, so far I've noticed a couple of uh, items here um, quickly just by going through. I noticed the first thing that uh, it's definitely missing a, a shear pin. Uh, hopefully that is uh, not uh, broken off and in the shaft still, but uh, I'll have to see what's going on with that and replace the shear pin. Of course, the uh, the side of the bucket here uh, is bent up on both sides pretty bad on this side, so we'll have to bend that back. Of course, there's some foreign material in here. Uh, this, I can't tell, but this bushing might be bad over here uh so this thing's got some major definitely needs some major tlc of course the paint is is really rough um thinking about doing some body work on this thing and just uh redoing the paint this tire uh is definitely not holding air both tires were flat this one is de definitely uh, down on air again. The other tire seems to be holding the air. I have not looked at the belts underneath as of yet, which I will. I've tried the electric start. The electric start does not seem to work when I plug it in. Uh, let's see, what else? What else can there pop? Oh yes, I remember now. The tilt on the chute control does not work. Uh, it, it's actually snapped off. That plastic is snapped off there, so I'm going to have to try and figure out something for that. The lateral chute control works at least. I mean, if worst comes to worst, we could just fasten this into a fixed position or put a handle on it so somebody can actually like rotate it where they like manually. Uh, I've tried to start the engine uh, with pulling it and it didn't start so it's probably obviously been sitting for a while uh what is that in the gas tank something going on in the bottom of this gas tank and i can tell you from the color of that yellowish tinge that this fuel is awful uh, i can smell it from a foot and a half away so yeah this thing's got a lot of issues guys again I, I only paid 50 bucks and if it just ends up being a parts machine uh, i'm sure i could probably get 50 bucks worth of parts off of it hopefully the engine does run after i clean up the carburetor but um i guess uh, first thing is to see if this thing will run and uh, if it's even worth continuing on with the rest of this stuff let's see what the it's got for oil hopefully it's got some oil i know it had some compression so the oil is properly filled but it's definitely dark so it needs to be changed which i would expect anyways and do if uh if it leaves my shop so Let's see if we can get this thing to uh, at least fire off and um, see if it has spark and compression. All right, so first what we need to do is uh, take the key out, uh, take this choke handle off. Okay, and then there is a couple of bolts that we're going to have to take off and a couple of screws as well to try and get at 
access to the uh, carburetor underneath here. So there's a couple of Phillips. One. Two. And then we've got some, uh, I think five sixteenths. There should be three, one, two, and usually three on the other side here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to leave that one for now. I might not need to take that one off, I think, actually. All right, so thankfully that one didn't break. It seemed like it was a little bit rusty. And then usually there is a, a wire for the uh, for the stop for the ground that you actually usually have to take off down here which I just did it goes down in this area right there and now we have access to the carburetor area and choke is working Throttle is a little sticky. Uh, yeah, throttle is a little sticky here. But that should loosen up, no problem. So I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, yeah, I can hear the, the uh, primer working. Can't. Yeah, so the primer's working. So I think what I'm gonna do here is, cause that fuel that's coming in or in the carburetor right, right now is, uh, is pretty bad stuff. I'm gonna just try and shoot some uh, starter fluid or carb spray in the carburetor directly. Try and get this thing to fire up and run on just that, that uh, that uh, starter fluid and if it will do that i know for sure it's got spark it's got compression and this will be a viable running engine all right so i'm just going to spray some of this starter fluid in there and then turn the choke back on see if we can get this thing to stir it up a little bit Okay, well that was promising. It sounded like something, but I also heard some weird stuff too, so. You might need to get the uh, one with the, with the tube on it there. Okay. So, that seemed to work okay. I did hear some weird sort of rattling noises. Maybe it was just the uh, the chute was rattling. Um, what I'd like to do is leave it running for a little longer and actually engage the drive and the uh, augers to see if those will actually spin. <laughs> and see if I have any transmission or, or uh, auger issues here. Okay, so what I've done is I put a, a wrap, a tie around the auger. So uh, the auger should be engaged when this thing starts. So I'm gonna leave my can of carb spray here See if I can get it to stay running for a little longer. Okay, well, I could tell the augers were working. And now I'm going to try the transmission part.
looks like the auger and the transmission are both working so that must mean the belts are in half decent shape so uh, I think this is going to be viable but again it's going to require quite a bit of work shear pin not that big of a deal a couple bucks uh, maybe some time to get the old one out if it's still in there I'll check the belt of course I'm most likely going to have to put a tube in this tire and uh, hmm and obviously clean up the carburetor uh, so uh, and change up the oil and stuff like that and I'll go through all, all the transmission okay so I've pinched off the fuel line guys coming out of the fuel tank all right so there should be no more uh, fuel flowing to the carburetor I've also taken off this this wheel on this side just because it gives me a little more room and it's better visibility for for uh, filming for you guys uh, so the what I want to do is to try and get as much of the fuel out of this carburetor as I can so there is a little drain you just push up on this little guy down here and it should drain all the fuel out of the f carburetor now this stuff is pretty nasty that's coming out of here guys it's uh, it's very like almost neon yellow which tells me that it's super old this thing hasn't run in a I would say a couple of years probably and been stored outside so that's the fuel that's in the carburetor currently it's not not very pretty doesn't smell nice either so the majority of that is now out of the carburetor. I'm going to just put my bucket underneath, try and catch some of this that might come out. So to get this off, you're going to take this primer line off. Okay. And there you go. It's already snapped. So not that it makes any difference anymore, but I'll have to replace that. Sometimes you can just cut it until there's good stuff left and then put it back on. And I think that's going to be the case with this guy. I'm just going to move that out of the way. The fuel line is actually on the back side coming in back here. We're not going to worry about that for now. Um, but the easiest way to get this carburetor off, guys, is by taking off these bolts for the uh, intake. These... Uh, um, so I'm going to take these bolts off here and the whole intake and carb assembly is going to come off together. Now, the other thing you're going to have to worry about here is the uh, linkage that goes from the governor arm to the uh, throttle. So that that hole, if you can see that on these Tecumseys, there's actually multiple holes in the top of this throttle. Um, assembly so what you want to do is either use a marker or a, a scribe or something to mark which hole if you don't know or you're not going to remember uh, you can mark it with a some sort of a pick even and just so when you go to put it back together you remember which hole it goes into or take a picture with your cell phone or any other camera. Okay, so now I'm gonna work on getting these uh, torques out. And I can't remember if they're T30s. T30s, yeah. And usually you can crack these by hand. All right. Now there usually is also a some form of a gasket usually between the intake and the block. So if you can be careful and not break that gasket, then it'll help you not to have to spend any more money. Right, so I'm just kind of holding it. This one looks like the gasket is going to stay as part of the intake, which is good for me. Okay, now we can let it kind of sit. You can maybe see 
the fuel line now coming in from the back side we're going to have to remove that sometimes this can be a little bit of a tricky operation go ahead and get yourself some uh, pliers to remove the clamp and we just kind of lightly try to loosen the fuel line and looks like in my case it was okay, pretty easy to get it off. And then this linkage is gonna be a Z-bend, so you're gonna have to pull it down. And let me just see here, and then twist it towards you. There's, you can see a Z-bend here on that end of that linkage. So now I got the whole thing off. I can move now to my bench and uh, we can start cleaning this up. So before I get into the carburetor, what I wanna do is try and clean out the rest of this fuel system of this yep junky fuel so I'm just going to get a turkey baster and try and suck out as much of this fuel as I can well it looks like there's a lot of water in there it's pretty much all water and uh, the other thing I might do here as well is to take this tank off undo the fuel line take the tank right off and actually clean it out that way the rest of the way here so put something underneath here to catch the fuel right. so I'm just going to leave the fuel line because it does go across the other side through basically the engine bay and now I'm just going to take these two bolts off here at top these guys here and I think that, I believe that's the only two that hold that on. I think that looks like three eighths. There we go. And I'm going to take this over to the bench and uh, clean the rest of this out and see what's in there. left that's coming out I can hear whatever that is kind of floating around in there I'm just trying to see if I can get it to line up oh I think maybe I have it I think I know what that is Yeah, this is off the fuel cap. So it's the rubber piece that goes on the bottom of the fuel cap like this. So that came off and ended up in the tank. All right. Yeah, there's still a bunch of water and crap in there. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is, is uh, and get the rest of this out and then I'm going to rinse it out with some fresh gas and then I'm gonna let it dry out and blow any of the crap the debris that might be left in the tank afterwards so obviously I'm not gonna let make you guys watch all that and uh, I'll come back when I start breaking down this carburetor so we're up on the bench here now and uh, I'm going to split the intake from the carb. And again, there's usually a gasket similar to this one uh, in between those two pieces. So just try to make sure you try to do it as best you can without busting up that gasket so you don't have to replace it. Um, so I think this is uh, 7 16 but a lot of times you can just <coughs> spin that loose with a Phillips screwdriver and not even have to grab a wrench. Yours also might be a 3 8 bolt with a 7 16 nut. 
This one just happens to be a Phillips head screw. So let's see if this one will come off as easy. Yep. And then once it's loose, then you can just hold it with your finger. And again, I'm trying to not mangle this gasket, but I think the gasket, it looks like it's going to stay again on the intake here. Okay. All right. So now we just have the carburetor to handle here now. So first thing I'll do is take off this uh, float bowl. Usually there's a lot of stinky gas in there. So half inch. It's a half inch uh, bowl nut, which is also the main jet. When you take this off, that's where the car, the fuel comes, goes into here and fills up this, like the back of your toilet bowl. There's a float inside there that keeps the level at a certain value or determined level. And then you've got a jet that goes through and a passageway that goes through the center of this and shoots fuel up and into the throat of this carburetor. So here's our bowl nut. And this bowl nut, it takes fuel from two holes at the bottom and into the center of this and then shoots it out through a passageway up through the body of the carburetor. And there's a little tiny hole in here. Now, a lot of times these passageways get clogged up and gunked up, and then it doesn't allow the fuel to properly flow through there. And uh, it will, will start to run what we call lean, and uh, it will surge up and down, it'll run rough. So what you can do here is get yourself a bread tie, a wire tie, and yeah, this is, it was a little bit clogged up there. I don't see any debris though on the end of my wire. And then usually this wire will go down through there as well. I don't doubt you're going to be able to see that, but it is going in and out. And you can see the passageway there. Maybe see the hole that goes through. And then you can see that and then there's one other little hole that a lot of people forget on these things and just going to get a slightly smaller bread tie because the hole is smaller and it's right there and that comes out through here through the top so this actually isn't too bad i think the fact is is that this thing was filled with water and whatever little bit of fuel it was mixed in together. But let's take a look at the uh, inside of this carb. Now that the bowl nut is off, sometimes you gotta wiggle these back and forth a little bit. And wow, this is pretty surprising. Thankfully, there's not a lot of rust or gunk in here. There is a little bit of gelled up fuel right right here you can kind of see that that's a little jelly not the kind you want to put on a sandwich or a donut uh, all right so from here we're gonna take the bowl gasket off and inspect this you want to pull it apart and see if there's any cracking, if there's any, you know, if it's pliable. This one looks reusable, so we're gonna reuse that. Next thing we'll do is take off the float itself. This controls the amount of fuel that's left in here and, or that gets enters into the carburetor. Float bowl that is, and you pull out this pin and then the float and a needle, a needle valve comes out. So right underneath here, just be careful so you don't lose it. There's a needle valve right there. And that a lot of times will fall off. So just be careful. 
because it's only held on by this little piece of wire and it goes just like that okay underneath this little tab and this little tab can be bent depending on if your float is sitting at the right level or not if it's not allowing enough fuel into the carburetor float bowl then it it could uh, cause running issues or if it's letting too much fuel in and not shutting off the fuel then that'll flood the carburetor so with these plastic ones usually you don't have too much problem yours might have a brass one and uh, what I always do is just shake it and listen for any built up of fluid inside this and if it is then it's compromised and you're going to need to replace this float so this one's in good shape there is uh, what we call an emulsion tube down here i don't typically play around with these too much uh, on this type of carburetor i just leave them alone down in here is your rubber seat and that goes that's a that and the needle that i was showing you that's what makes a plug it's like a plug this will plug that up that little hole down here because that's where the fuel comes in from this inlet from your fuel hose or your tank and it will come up through this little hole and then this pin this needle it actually will block that that hole off and this allow the fuel to continue to come through or it will open up that passageway and allow fuel to come in so that's how that works uh, this choke assembly you can take it off but i don't usually take them off unless uh, i really need to uh, just make sure that they work okay now there is a couple of holes down there little passageways you're going to want to spray some carb spray into these holes Okay, and then I usually spray some into this little hole right here, that little right there at the end of my finger. Okay, I try not to put any in where that rubber seat is because carb spray will actually cause rubber parts to swell up and we don't want that. And there are sometimes little dinky holes right there on the side wall here. And you can try and get your carb spray in there. Okay. And then there's one other little screw here, a little brass screw that you want to take out. And just need a little flathead screwdriver. Sometimes yours will have maybe a a, a little boot or plug on top of it so that's okay just take that off and underneath there you'll see this uh, idle set screw and it doesn't need to be set or anything at a certain depth you just when you put it back in you just drive it in all the way until it bottoms out don't over tighten it but again this also has a bunch of little holes there's one one there on that side and one on that side it goes through and then there's another little teeny weeny hole in there so for these side ones again you can use a small bread tie and make sure that they're nice and clean on the top though this one won't fit in there so usually i have to get a really small piece of wire from like a wire brush I put it on an inside of a matchstick and then yeah and then again just spray all these little passageways with carb spray make sure they're nice and clean spray your main jet so all this stuff actually doesn't look too bad. I think it was just the fact that it just had water instead of fuel. And that's what was causing it to not run. So if you don't have 
an ultrasonic cleaner, then just clean up all this stuff as best you can. All those little orifices. Replace any parts that are damaged. Uh, and then put it all back together in the reverse order. So I'm just going to put this stuff in my ultrasonic cleaner to kind of double up on what I've done. And get it to uh, be super clean. And when we're done, I'll come back and we'll... I'm probably not sure putting it back together because this is going to be a long enough video already. But uh, we'll put it all back together and we'll get it back on the machine. I'm almost finished uh, putting this back together. Uh, one thing I wanted to just uh, tell you about the reassembly process is these Tecumseh uh, carburetors. Um, this, you can kind of see this uh, flat or kind of recessed area here that has to line up with the uh, flat part of the float or parallel to the float pin if yours is just round. So just wanted to point that out if uh, you didn't make note of that when you were disassembling it. Also one other thing in case you didn't mark off which hole that came out of, it's always this one in the top left corner. And uh, you can see there's a bunch of other ones, but this one in the top left corner, that's the one that the uh, linkage has to go back into. So it's all put back together and ready to go back on the machine. Looks pretty nice now. So. Hopefully this works out. Okay, so we're just going to put the uh, put it on in the reverse. Uh, we're going to put the linkage in first. Again, it's a Z-bend, so you kind of have to twist it so that it goes and then rotate. We're going to put the fuel line back on. Might need a pair of pliers. line it back on now. Now I can go ahead and put the everything back up and then attach the intake to the motor and these bolts they really only need to go in hand tight. You don't have to be Worked on with some sort of heavy duty torque wrench or something. Okay, and then try out all the linkages. Make sure everything is free. Everything looks good here. And we can rehook up our primer line. And this primer line is busted. So again, we'll just snip off until we got some good section there and then see if it will fit. If not, I'll have to replace that. But usually there's enough to Hook that back up without too much issues. Okay. All right. So now we're ready to put the fuel tank back on, put some fresh fuel in there, put the wheel back on, and then spin it outside, see if we can get this thing to run um properly and if so uh, we can do some more te testing also while i had the uh, carburetor and the ultrasonic cleaner i didn't film this because the ultrasonic cleaner is really loud i serviced the spark plug i took it out i uh, cleaned it off on my wire wheel regapped it to thirty thousandths of an inch i also had to drill out the uh, old shear pin so i don't know yet if i've drilled it out big enough 
to accommodate the new shear pin. I haven't tested that just yet, but I drilled out the old one. I couldn't, uh, I used a punch and a hammer to try and get it through and it didn't work. So I had to, I step drilled it and just use a small drill bit first and then a bigger drill bit. So I might have to go a little bigger with that. Um, but hopefully the uh, fuel tank is uh, dry out enough that we can put it back on and then we'll go ahead and uh, get this thing fired up, hopefully. All right, so I got you outside here. Uh, I've had fuel in it for a couple minutes now. I've done a leak check. I don't see any fuel leaking out anywhere. Um, so that's a good thing. I've tested the primer and it is spitting fuel into the throat of the carburetor there. So I've primed it a couple times. Uh, I'm gonna get the throttle sort of midway to three quarters throttle. Uh, I did plug in the electric start to see if it would work and as I said previously there's nothing guys um, what I'm gonna try to do is actually hit the starter with a with a hammer lightly as I'm as I'm trying to hit the engage the starter to see if that might help uh, there might be a stuck Bendix or something like that in the starter I don't have any real hope for this but we'll see what happens yeah, I think the starter is, is pooched so we're gonna try and start it up just using the regular handle here all right See what happens, see if we get any fire. Okay, so that's uh that's good here we got this thing up and running uh, like I say it's got a couple issues still um, one more issue I've now found is that uh, when I put it into R1 it actually does drive forward ever so slowly and then R2 does start to come backwards uh, R1 through 6 do seem to work although R or sorry F one to six seems to work, but F1 seems to be a little bit on the fast side. So uh, this is gonna require a bit of an adjustment on the transmission, uh, which I will um, do in another video. I will also try to uh, show you how to, I'm going to uh, fix up this, um, this guy here, for, try and see if I can get the, uh, the shoot control to work, but uh, um, I'm not going to take care of that in this video. I'm also going to change the, uh, the oil and I will also be taking a look at these, inspecting these belts. But for now, I think this video has been long enough. Uh, watch for future videos on this particular machine. Hopefully you found it informative. And uh, if you did, go ahead and smash the like button for me. That really helps me out on the channel. Consider subscribing as well uh, for all my future videos. So until our next video, guys, take care.